Hello, and welcome to another exciting edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we are going to be talking about patent design around. Design around is when someone accomplishes their goal without infringing a patent. As a patent holder, you want to have patents that are resistant to design around. In most cases, it's not possible to completely prevent all design around. However, by understanding a bit about how design around works, you can take steps to put your patent applications in the best possible position for being resistant to it. So to understand design around, you need to have a basic understanding of claims. If needed, you can check out the inventor's quick tip episode on claim basics. The claims indicate what the invention actually is, and in order to infringe a patent claim, each element of the claim must be infringed or used by the other device. So in the most basic form, if we have a claim to a widget that has three elements A, B, and C, then a competitor device must have those three elements in order to infringe our claim. So looking at our five competitor devices, we see that device one has only A and B and therefore does not infringe. Device 2 has only A and C and therefore does not infringe. Device 3 has A, B, and C and does infringe. It has all the claim elements. Device 4 has A, B, and C and also does infringe. It has all the claim elements even though it also has some extra stuff in element D. And finally, device 5 does not infringe as it does not have element C. So now you get the idea that to infringe a claim you need all the elements of that claim. This is an important fact in the realm of design around. If a competitor can accomplish the goal without having all the claim elements then they can design around the claim. So let's take a look at a simplified example to further illustrate this point. Let's suppose we have invented a clothes iron with auto shutoff. So before we came along, irons existed, but you had to remember to unplug them. We decided we wanted to solve the problem of energy wasting and fire hazards caused by forgetting to unplug an iron. So we have in invented the world's first auto shutoff iron. This is our concept. And let's take a look at our design. Let's see how we did it. So the way our design works is we have a touch sensor on the handle of the iron. Internal to the iron is a timer that controls the heating element, which provides heat to the bottom heating surface. When someone lets go of the iron, a five minute timer starts. If someone holds on to the iron again, the timer is canceled. When they let go again, the timer starts counting down from five minutes again. If the timer counts down all the way to zero, the iron shuts off. So now that we know what our design is and how our product works, let's take a look at our claim. So our claim elements include a handle, a heating surface, a temperature control, a timer, and a touch sensor mounted to the handle portion. So our claim lines up pretty well with our design. But now let's see what our competition is doing. Our competitor uses an accelerometer mounted within the iron. The accelerometer, similar to the type found in a smartphone, can detect motion of the iron. When the motion stops, the timer is started, and if no motion occurs, the timer counts down to zero and the iron shuts off. So looking at our claim once again, the first three elements, now grayed out, are an essential part of any iron, whether it has auto shutoff or not. But let's focus on the last two elements, as our invention and design really hinges upon the timer and the touch sensor. So now, thinking about our competition, they do not have the last element. They don't use a touch sensor, 
and so they do not infringe our claim, even though they accomplish the same result that we did, shutting off the iron after a period of inactivity. So while our first claim covered the design we plan to use, it was specific enough that design around is relatively easy. A more generalized claim is harder to design around. Here we have a generalized claim. Instead of specifically calling out a touch sensor or an accelerometer, we simply claim a timer trigger device, which could be anything that can start a timer. It could be an accelerometer, a touch sensor, or even some other thing that has yet to be invented. So with a claim like this, even the accelerometer design of our competitor could infringe this claim. Thus, design around is made more difficult with a claim like this. So what can you do to prepare for design around? One of the best ways is to think of all the alternative solutions that you can that could accomplish your goal. Here, the goal is to shut off the iron after a period of inactivity. If that is our broad invention, then we want our claims to cover the concept of shutting off an iron after a period of inactivity, regardless of how the inactivity is detected. Even if we are only planning to build our irons with design number one using the touch sensor, if we can contemplate other designs, other ways that it might be done, those other designs can be included and claimed in our patent application. So in addition to the touch sensor, we can describe and claim the accelerometer design, and we can think of other designs such as design three, which includes a light sensor on the base. So when you stand the iron upright, the light does not reach the light sensor, and that starts the timer. And if the iron is left in the upright position, within a few minutes, the iron shuts off. As you can imagine, there are probably several other ways to detect inactivity in an iron. So if we uh, invented the broad concept of auto shutoff, we want to have claims that are generic enough so that even designs that we did not anticipate could be covered by our claims. So the moral of the story is, when you are working on your patent applications, try to think of alternative embodiments. That means alternative ways of doing things and put those alternative embodiments into your patent application because it has multiple benefits. Number one, it helps increase the chance that you are going to get a patent because the more different embodiments you have, the easier it is to get one of them at least to be allowed as an issued patent. Number two, it makes it harder to design around your patent because if you can get uh, the different embodiments claimed and have uh, generic claims as well, it can be, uh, it can make it harder for others to design around your patent. And thirdly, it can help prevent competitors from getting a patent on the alternative designs because as you disclose these designs, they become what's known as prior art for other people. So when other people are also working on the problem of iron auto shutoff, your patent application will serve as a reference that could help prevent them from getting a patent on those concepts. So now that you have an idea about design around, you can apply this technique in your own inventions and patent applications to generate stronger and more valuable patents. Thanks again for checking out Inventor's Quick Tips, and we'll see you next time.